I must have seen a volcano on a TV program. I thought, oh, that, that's quite interesting. I, I, it's big and fiery and I want to know more. Um, I've become a terrible bore at parties whenever people ask me what subject I do because I, I reel off all the wonderful things about my subject. And, and then people are like, yeah, she's a rock girl. <laughs> I just always liked the sciences and wanted to do physical geography, but didn't really like the, the humans in it. Um, I reached this point where I went on the Oxford website and it was like, oh, Earth Sciences, I'll click on that. And suddenly this world opened up to me and it was just very inviting. It's nice to be able to explain those things that people take for, take for granted otherwise, that people think are so beautiful and take pictures of and are inspirations to artists and to poets and things. And you can say, well, there's some science behind it. So it's a course that involves a broad application of a broad range of sciences towards understanding our home planet. Earth Sciences is like geology plus, so we do all the things about the rocks, we do the volcanoes, we do the earthquakes, we do glaciers, we do everything under the sun, quite literally under the sun and other planets. And what I think Earth Sciences is, is it takes all those ideas from geology a step further and we apply ideas from maths, we apply ideas from physics, we apply ideas from chemistry, biology and all these other sciences. So it's a really holistic subject. You spend your time not just doing, like looking at old crusty fossils, which wasn't what I was particularly interested in, but um, but looking at the oceans and the atmospheres and how the stars were formed. So it's a it was a wider course and maybe at other places, which quite attracted me. In the first two years, there's very limited choice in what you can do. In the first year, you will take compulsory courses in maths, physics, chemistry, biology, uh, one which we call the fundamentals of geology, one in paleobiology and we have a capstone course in the first year called Planet Earth. I'm so glad they've made me take what I have to take because I've studied everything and I can really, like, I can make an informed decision about what I actually like and what I don't like. The thing I found most challenging at the beginning was potentially the, the geology that I hadn't done before and that's not to put people off. It's, it's a big commitment. As far as workload goes, it's quite heavy. It's kind of lecture intense but actually you get used to it far very quickly. In the first year, you will have around 11 or 12 hours of lecture every week. You will have about nine hours of practicals. You arrive in the first year. Within a week, you disappear off to the south of Wales, to Pembrokeshire which is incredibly good actually because you, you really bond with your tutors, with the rest of your group. Field courses are an integral part of the course and particularly in the first and second years they involve some travel outside of the academic term. There's a Scottish trip to the Isle of Arran, also in first year. Start of second year we go to Dorset, the Jurassic Coast. I'm sure lots of people have been there, walked along the beaches hoping to find a massive ammonite. In the fourth year, half the year is taken up with a research project. And that research project is actually a real piece of science. We don't come up with noddy projects to fill half a year of your time. And the large amount of research project work in the course does really enable you to pick something and just go with it. In the third and fourth years, there's much more scope for choosing options and going your own way. It's a really good opportunity. The departments say, we can fund you some money. The college say, we can give you some money. I went to um, Italy, Northern Italy, and mapped um, an ophiolite, which is basically part of the seafloor that's been pushed up onto the land. It's so incredible. You really are. You're, you're out there. You've chosen your area. You've worked out all the logistics, all the accommodation, and you're out there in the field. Usually it's raining. Usually your field slip is getting wet and you're holding your compass going, where can I take a bearing to? How do I know where I am? We have the Oxford University uh, Geology Society, OUGS, and everyone is given the option to join at the beginning. And throughout the year, we have amazing speakers, we have amazing workshops, we have different companies coming in and talking about prospective internships, prospective careers. I mean, we have, we have um, geology nights out, and we go, and we go for meals, and, um, and there's such an interaction between all the years. The really good thing is everyone in the department has a speciality and if you need to know something about somewhere or something, you literally you can knock on the door of that person's office you go, do you have 10 minutes now? And they'll say, yeah, I have an hour now, what do you want to know? If you look at any of the global rankings, you'll find that we are way up there in the top five or 10 degree courses in the world.
we've got a fantastic building up in slightly north of Oxford. We've got our own library, which is an incredible resource to have. If we didn't have the libraries that we did, I would have spent hundreds of pounds on books by now, just because you quit, you learn that the internet and Wikipedia isn't isn't enough anymore. We have a massive mass spectrometer that must be, you know, tons. The weight of an elephant that had to be craned in through the wall, and you can just see it. But on the same time, at the same time, I get to use a microscope, which is something I've a proper geological microscope, which is something I'd never had the experience of before. We have the resource that is the tutorial, where you will again be taught in very small groups, two or three, by again some of the leading scientists in the world. None of uh, us at Exeter College had done geology before, so we walked in and there were just rocks on the desk. And it's like, our tutor picks up the rock and he says, do you have any idea what this is? And the blank faces around the room was very impressive. But by the end of that one hour, we were you know, picking rocks up and we're going, oh, that's from this part of the earth, that's that rock. You go into a tutor's a little first year and sit there and he quizzes you and you have no idea what to say and you come out at the end, at the, end of the hour and um, I can't do anything for the rest of the day because I'm just exhausted. In first year, you will normally have two tutorials a week and we would expect you to do anywhere between six and eight hours of preparation per tutorial. Later on in the course, you can have tutorials from experts in that field. So if you're struggling a bit in igneous petrogenesis, for example, your college tutor will recommend a postgraduate or lecturer who's willing to take tutorials covering whatever it is you're struggling with. You never don't know anything. You just need to work to the answer. It's never black and white. Um, it's never, oh, I know it or I don't know it. You, you know something and they just help you to, help you to get there. what we try and do at interviews, we try and go beyond what's, what's taught at A-level and, and we'll try and get you to look at problems in a new way. We'll get you to look at a problem that you should be able to address using what you already know. You sit down and they ask you a question and they just want to see how you work. You don't have to get the right answer. That's, that's not what the whole interview process is about. The thing we're really looking for beyond academic excellence is a natural curiosity and a passion for science and a passion for understanding the natural world. These people in front of you are just there to really coax out the scientist in you. What we're going to try and do pretty much straight away is we're going to hit you with a problem and we're going to try and see how you think your way around that particular problem. They're not there to trick you out and um, so I had some maths problems and there was one that I didn't know the answer to um, and they sort of worked me through it and helped me through it. So it's supposed to be like a mini tutorial. They don't want to see how much you know now they want to see what they can get out of you and the potential and your willingness to learn and your willingness to take on new ideas. It's not all about just getting heaps of A's at GCSEs and heaps of A's at AS level. It's about taking what you have learned and then applying it in a new way to a completely new problem. You can't tell in an Oxford interview how well you're doing, whether you think you've done well. I came out practically crying, convinced I'd done appallingly. And, and um, then the, the next day they said, no, you don't need a second interview. And I thought, oh, well, that's it then. They've decided I'm completely rubbish. I received one letter from uh, the college I'd applied to saying they unfortunately couldn't take me. And, but it was a special sign letter saying that another college had given me an offer. So that was really exciting. you get the notice through UCAS that there is an offer, log in to see it. And, and then for me, Oxford had said yes, and I was astonished, <laughs> thrilled. And my advice to you is, if you're interested in the subject and you think you have a, a good academic standard, then you should apply. What employers tell us, one of the things that they greatly value from our course is the fact that people who graduate from this course are actually very good at lateral thinking. I'm off to work for BP over the summer, which I was lucky enough to get, um, as it's 11 weeks up in Aberdeen, sunny Aberdeen. I'm hoping to maybe continue on further in education, do a, a postgraduate degree in, in some topic. I haven't quite decided yet. Mm. 
number of students who leave here get jobs in completely different fields, but will always harp back on about how their earth sciences degree prepared them for any job they've got. You can take geology and go anywhere you like, I think. I know it sounds very cheesy and very cliche, but to, to honestly feel this enthused about a subject is something that I think Oxford has been a part of, I think my department's been a part of, and I think if you just enjoy a subject, then Oxford is definitely for you because this is a place where things get done.